So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information? If you all can see my screen and hear me down and clear as well. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation, everyone. So my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce our Madurika Masterclass community with you all. So this community of Masterclasses was started back in 2019. And since then, we have been closing into more than 31,000 members so far. And in these Masterclasses, there are multiple topics that gets covered, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, big data on BI platforms and multiple front end back end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of course, so there are no charges involved here. And to get notified on the entire schedule that has been planned for the month, we can directly click on this option which says join this group and then we will be notified with the entire schedule that has been planned for the month. So in here we are going to discuss on a simple introduction to Java where we are going to discuss on multiple Java programs where we are going to talk about a simple calculator program in Java, a factorial, a factorial program, a Fibonacci series, palindrome, permutation and combination, patterns, string reverse, mirror reverse, binary search, heap support, removing elements, hash map, circular link list, Java database, and transpose of a metric. So these things are the ones that we are going to cover as a part of our session one by one. So let's get started. So Java, as you know, is basically a high level programming language where it is the core of every other programming language itself and was released by Sun Microsystems and developed by James Gosling. It's a free and open source software, so there's no licensing involved here. And it was originally called as Oak. So in terms of the features, again, it is easy. It simply follows the distributed architecture itself. And then it is more secure as compared to more platforms because of multi-level abstraction and data security features in enable. It is all object oriented. That means the entire program is divided into small objects. And then we have, it is highly integrated language as well again. And then it is platform independent. We can write in one platform and we can run in any platform and it is multi-threaded as well. So, now, if you talk about basic Java programs, because that is what our focus here is. First of all, we can look at a simple calculator program in Java, how we can create that, where we can perform multiplication, division, interest, square, subtraction, and multiple other operations can be performed there. So if you go ahead and so what we can do here is we can move to our IntelliJ. So we can start. So we already have one program up and running. So again, we already have our IntelliJ up and running. So we can create a new program, for example, here we can name it as calculator. We can name it as a calculator itself. And in here, we are simply going to define, a, now here we can import the scanner values to take inputs from the users. So before we start defining calculator, we can define import java.util.scanner. So scanner is something that we are going to make use of for taking input from the end users. And here we are taking the public class as calculator. And here we can find public static void main string argus. Now here we are going to find first of all scanner. So here we are going to find scanner reader as a new scanner to take input from the end users where we can define this one to take input in terms of system in and then we can define system dot out dot print ln for printing the statements here we define let's say we can ask the users to enter two numbers so then they have then they are going to simply enter two different numbers here and then we are simply going to read the next double from the keyboard so here we're going to find double first. Double is for the decimal values. And then from the scanner part, that means from reader, we are going to need it as in a next double value. And then we are going to create a second value for double. And again, we are going to read it by using reader dot next double. 
and then we are going to define the output as system dot out dot print ln and then we can define suppose enter an operator enter an operator we want to the we want the users to enter the operator they want to add subscribe they want to add divide subscribe whatever they want to do we can give them the options as well for example they can enter plus minus multiply or they can enter divide as well so whatever they want to do we can simply allow them to do that and then we can give them the options to make a selection and then we have to simply define car operator whatever they are going to enter we have to save it as an operator and that too by using the scanner reader as next and car at car at define at zero and then we are going to see the result in terms of double value store it and then we are going to do, use a switch case for each of the operations we are going to make use of a switch case so here we can define switch for the operator and then here we have to find multiple switch case statements so first of all we can find case that case is what if the user enters a plus operator then what is what then what should happen so here we can define result should be what result should be first plus the second value that we have taken up so first whatever the first value is going to be entered plus the second value that should be the result and then if that's it then it should simply break away else again more and more cases are going to be created so we can create four case for four operators plus minus then for multiply and then for divide so for this one it should be first minus second for this one should be first multiplied by second and for this one it should be first divided by second and then it should simply break and then if the operator doesn't match any of the constants then here we can define default so default should be again simply read out default should be the system just system dot out dot print ln and then we can define suppose please select right operator and then we can use return and then on return we can simply go ahead and define system system dot out dot print ln and in here we can define the variables that is going to be entered by users so it is going to be percent dot one f and then the percent c for the operator again percent dot one f one f for again the second number and then the end result should be again the percent dot one f as in the float values and then we can define what exactly needs to be printed here so it's going to be first then it is going to be operator then it is going to be second and then it is going to be result so once we are done we can simply run this entire code here by simply pressing ctrl shift f10 let's wait for this one to be compiled so as you can see it is asking us for entry two different numbers suppose we enter suppose two and we enter suppose nine so now if we have to enter the operator suppose we want to multiply as you can see here we have the float value defined as 2 multiplied by 9 is equal to 18. all right i'll give we want to run this up for example here we define suppose as 11 not here as 11 we define the next number suppose as 19 and here we define the operator suppose as suppose any other operator suppose any other operator as you can see here we have got the end number please select the right operator because this is not inside these different operators available all right now here we can define again same thing as public static void main as string argus and here we can use the same scanner class you can name it as scanner itself scanner as new scanner as an object for system dot in and then we can define the same message as system dot out dot print ln and here we want to print the message suppose as enter the number now here we are building the program for factorial 
for finding the factorial here. And then we can define integer as a num number as an integer value. And here we can save it as here we want to, to take the input from the from the end users, right? So here we want to use it as next integer. We want to take the input from the end user and store it as a part of next integer. And then we can call the user defined function fact as integer for factorial where we are going to find the factorial of the number entered by the users where we are going to simply take the input and define it as a part of factorial entered by the end users here and then we can define a message for system dot out dot print ln and here we can define the message as factorial of entered number is and then we can define static integer factorial for integer n ended by n users. And here we have defined integer as suppose it can be defined as output. And if here we can define condition if n is equals to one, then we can define it should return one. And then we can define the statement as well. suppose if in terms of recursion functional calling itself, we can define output should be factorial of n minus one multiplied by n multiplied by n. And then we can define we want to turn the output towards the n. So now if we go ahead and run this up. It is going to simply ask us to enter a number. So here, suppose we enter number, suppose as 54. It can be any number for which we want to find the factorial. So whatever the number is, the factorial for that is going to be turned as a part of the response. Here we define the values for that. And same way we can define this for Fibonacci series as well. So for example, we want to, to define this for, for Fibonacci. So the process remains same public, public static void main and here we can define a simple Fibonacci series. Let's say here we can define integer n and here we can define this one to be suppose let's say 100. We can define t1 to be equals to suppose 0 and t2 to be equals to 1. And here we can define system dot out dot print. And here we can define up to, and then we can simply define this to be concatenated. Suppose here we can define plus n, and again we can concatenate this to the under Fibonacci series. Suppose as we can define this value here. Next, why now here we have to add while loop to calculate Fibonacci series up to n numbers. So for that we can define a simple while statement and under while we can define if t1 is less than or equals to n. Then we can define we want to print system dot out dot print and here we want to define print suppose as t1 then concatenate this with the values being printed. A simple operator defined as plus and then we can define another integer as sum where we can define t1 plus t2 t1 plus t2 and then we can define t1 should be t2 and here we can define t2 should be equals to sum as a part of values being defined so we can run this all right. Thank you so much for everyone and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.